Shipe Jensen, I'm a tattoo artist at Evil Genius Tattoo Club. My name is Fisher Adelikin. Fisher as in fisherman without the man. <laughs> uh, I, I'm a senior at Purdue University. Uh, I'm 24, I study computer graphics. Um... Hi, my name is Allison Salke. Um, title, like Miss Allison <laughs> Hi, my name is Allison Salke. I'm a junior at Purdue University studying film and theater production. Uh, ben Oliver, I'm a film and theater production major student at Purdue University. Davey Arts, tattoo artist, Lafayette, Indiana. Uh, for me? Hmm, that's a vague question. Honestly, at some point you start losing count. And I would say that I have been under the needle over a hundred times, at least. Um, I definitely couldn't tell you how many I have. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hold on, I gotta set the on. Um, I can think, I got one, two, three, four, five, I think six separate pieces. I have seven. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. My tattoos, I have pretty much the arm sleeves, some tattoos on the chest, some random ones on my legs. Then I have a, um, an everything sleeve. It's like my journey through life tattoo arm thing. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. Damn, I'm one short. Okay. So 23 tattoos, roughly. My very first one was, it's over my heart, it's my mother's initials. Um, that one kind of like one of the most uh, meaningful to me because she passed away when I was 11 and for that to be like my first tattoo is kind of, you know, I wanted it to be meaningful um, even if it's not flashy. But um, it's one that like, you know, to sound cliche and corny or whatever, it's close to my heart because it's literally you know, over there. My first tattoo, I actually did it myself. It was the world's scariest experience. Like, yeah, it was, it's on my leg though, yeah. Needle broke. It was terrifying. But yeah. So my first tattoo is right here. It's a bar of music, and I got it just because music is a really big part of my life. I'm in the choir here for, um, right now, and I was in the All American Marching Band my freshman year, and I've just been in choir and band and all that kind of stuff just growing up throughout middle school, high school. The first one is this one, which is a line drawing of like a praying Buddha and under it, it says breathe, and it's the only one that I have that faces me, whereas all the other ones, like when you do your tattoo, they're placed upside down to like face other people. But this one is purposely facing me, yeah. I have both my children's names tattooed on my left arm. Um, that's really just more or less the, um, you know, get my kids' names on me. Maybe that's, you know, a little bit cliche, corny or two is, well, but uh, and then I have one that is a it's meant to be a PT Barnum's uh top hat with like kind of watercolor or like paint splatter of a like kind of a skull shape underneath that. And then the phrase, uh, I remember who all this was for is from the movie uh, The Greatest Showman. It's a lyric from one of the songs in there, just to kind of and it's put right beside uh, both my kids' names, just to remind me, you know, anywhere I go in life, 
whatever I may be doing, it's, it's gonna be for them. They're no, number one in my life, so that's, uh, not that I really need that reminder, but it's just kind of that, you know, that sort of tattoo logic, like, yep, you gotta put something on there. My last one was, I actually just got that uh, a little over a week ago. Um, while I was vacationing in Holland, I got a uh, Delft Blue flower design, which is like a traditional design that they put on a lot of their pottery. Pretty much just kind of commemorate the trip to Amsterdam. Um, it was a great time, and so I figured, you know, while I'm over there, I might as well get another piece. I got plenty of open skin, so I need to get, I need to get it all covered. Uh, <laughs> excuse the language, but um, I have fuck fascists. Uh, I'm um, both my left elbow, um, and then the other two to round that out will probably be the cacti, because I did that one myself, and, um, hmm, probably the, probably, actually, you know, probably uncomfortable in any space. I like that one a lot. It's very representative of who I am. So I have two right here, um, love and faith, and love is written in my mom's handwriting and faith is written in my dad's handwriting. And it was kind of a surprise to both of them. I just told them I was doing a project and I needed them to write a bunch of words. And so I had them like write it out and then I was able to bring that and have it like so that it's actually their handwriting. So I have a cross on my right ring finger. I just really like the idea of having the cross on my hand. Um, I have this idea where it's like when I get married, it's like the ring on this hand and then like the cross on this hand. I also have um, a house on my ankle and my sister, she's a freshman at Ball State right now and she's in architecture. And so she actually drew this and this is actually my childhood house. And so again, it's like her hand writing cool sketch work on me. And my other sister is currently sketching up um, a film related tattoo that I'm going to get. Not sure when, but so that's like a coming soon. Mm -hmm. And then I also have a moon right here. and. This one was just kind of like, there's this whole like the dark side of the moon and so there's always like the phases and the faces of the moon and I think it's really cool how people have like those different kind of like personalities and phases when they're around different people and like depending on the importance and how close you are to that person. So and I've just always had a fascination with the moon and so so like you know my face tattoos are obviously one of my big important tattoos uh, my favorite because it either makes people not talk to me or want to talk to me and it's always a good feeling um, I would have oh, honestly my earliest one I don't know if I can get this in the camera but I got this little one on my ankle right here and uh, that was my second tattoo I ever did in my career and uh, yeah it was awful <laughs> Um, if I had to have a favorite one, it might be the one here. So it is um, two hands and then a bunch of stars intermixed. And I got it because I'm a Christian and I love the whole idea of how God hand created each of the stars. And so it's just really cool how I can portray that. Mmm, mm, that's close. Wow. Okay, I have like a top five. Okay. I, I, it's hard to pick one favorite because they're all my children um, but I definitely have some that I do like than, than others um, I would say that I love all my tattoos the same yeah because they all they're all on me you know I and mean, I can't hate any of them well I can but I don't <laughs> I guess the one that's my favorite is definitely my uh, Simpsons half sleeve. Um, favorite maybe because I put so much time into that one and it's not even fully done yet. Um, but that's, it's a show that I, my older brother and I, we've watched since we were kids. Um, it really has developed like our sense of humor and our sense of you know, pop culture awareness. And it's a show that I can continue to watch uh, to this day, like with my children and just laugh my butt off with it and just, yeah, it's, that's probably my favorite one so far. I have like favorites, I would say. I would say some of my first tattoos are some of my favorites too, for the opposite reason, you know, because they're not done well and because they remind me of somewhere I was and where I am now. So it kind of just really depends on the tattoo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I love cutting costs. I, I wanted more tattoos, but what's the largest expense about tattoos? It's the time. It's basically the time you pay the artist to do it on you. So I figured that, um, you know, 
I just want like a couple tiny ones. I don't need to pay hundreds of dollars for these tattoos. So I bought a, a tattoo machine kit. Um, came with some fake skin for me to practice on. And that's how it happened. It was just like I wanted to save some money. <laughs> so I bought a, a whole new discipline. And I don't know, it's been fun. So it was actually. Um I actually had no interest in tattooing. I didn't even fathom that it could be a career like this. Um, in fact, no one in my uh, close circle of relationships was very supportive of tattooing. Um, so I was getting a tattoo in a home with one of my close friends, and the guy who was doing the tattoo looked at me and was like, hey man, I noticed that you draw. Would you mind drawing on your friend's tattoo? And I was like, yeah, like hell yeah, I'll do that. Like, what's up, that's cool. And uh, you know, after I got done, it came out nice enough that he asked me if I've ever thought about tattooing, and I was like, I am now, like, this is cool, and um, genuinely, the next, like, within the week, he brought me over to his house, he uh, set me up with a lot of his old equipment and told me to tattoo this little skull on him, and uh, it came out awful, it was terrible, but it was the first tattoo I ever done, and he thought it came out good enough that he gave me all of his, his you know, practice equipment and set me out on my mission. Yeah, so kind of been tattooing since, but I really, I mean, just someone telling me I looked like I could. <laughs> just on the journey, well, I was working at a factory and I kept drawing on the walls, always got in trouble. And my supervisor was like, bro, you just need to like do tattoos and get it over. And I was like, ding, light bulb. I was like, ah, oh, shit, dude, I could do tattoos. Why didn't I think of that? So I was just like, let's do it. So I just jumped on a bandwagon. Ooh. How long has it been? Probably seven, eight years total. So it's been quite a while. I like to be able to express myself through, you know, these pieces of art on my skin. Um, yeah, it, it's, I, I, I wish I had some sort of deeper, meaningful like, answer for that, but it's just like, I, I like tattoos. And I've always liked them. Um, I've always wanted to, get several of them so now that you know I've I've had the opportunity to or time and opportunity to get them done it's just kind of like I'm gonna you know, keep going until I'm I can't I don't have maybe not don't have any skin in left that's maybe that's very extreme but um, yeah it just I like them I like how they look I yeah they just they make me feel like I'm expressing myself artistically or, or uh, personally when without having to, I guess, do much of anything except for just show them off. Well, in Nigeria, you know, we, I'm from Nigeria, sorry. In Nigeria, we don't have tattoo artists as a normal job, and people frown upon tattoos generally. So I didn't really know about tattoos until I came to America. And then I think I was fascinated with them based on how cool the people looked. Uh, I remember in middle school, um, when I was all hopped up on pixie sticks. I would take a marker and just draw myself. And then I asked other people to draw myself. Like my, my teacher would be like, don't get some sort of poison you get from all the ink in your system. I don't care, I look cool with it, it doesn't matter. So it really started from that, in the sense of like wanting to define myself. And then coupled with like me trying to study art and make art and learn art, kind of evolved into its own like I, I don't view it anymore as just like oh this is what I can use to like be cool now it's more of like oh this is another form of art it's another form of like expression it's another medium for like certain people like the artistry behind them because it's just really cool because it's like I'm really bad at drawing and art and I think it's really cool that other people are super awesome at it and especially tattoo artists are like a cool form of it and so like being able to get something that looks so cool on me and it's like I didn't make this, but someone cool did, and it looks really awesome. And, I don't know, I think it's just awesome. So I know my first tattoo, because it's here, my parents were kind of like, you know, it's hidden. And so I know like when I started getting tattoos like on my arms, um, there was a little pushback, but not in like a terrible way. It was just kind of more they love me, they just want me to, you know, obviously, like you said with the stigma of it, just want me to like have a good life. But yeah, 
and especially with my finger tattoo. My dad really didn't like that just because, again, with like getting jobs, he just was nervous about that. And so I know there was a little bit of pushback, but they also were like, you know, you're over the age of 18, you're an adult now. So it wasn't like, I forbid you. It was just kind of a little bit of a, ooh. When I got my first tattoo, um, because it's in a spot that's not visible, it's you know always covered by a shirt, um, I never really got any um, pushback from that. And it's not something I felt like I had to walk, go around to people and be like, hey, I got a tattoo, look at me. Um, the first visible one I got um, was my kids' names. And I never got any p uh, pushback on that either. Um, I, th I don't think I've gotten any negative feedback from any of the of my visible tattoos mostly just kind of like compliments people i think it's be, yeah there is still a stigma for a lot of people but i think a lot of people have a lot more people have started to accept them and see that you know it is just an expression of yourself you know no like just like a piercing or any other body modification um a lot of, yeah a lot of people compliment them they say like that's awesome a lot of people have laughed and like at my simpsons tattoo they said that's great that's awesome i wish i could sit through something like that you know to get something like that done so uh, i'm yeah i'm really fortunate that i haven't had to deal with any sort of negativity about any of them really it's i mean being a parent with tattoos it's really i guess no different than just being a parent normally um my kids love them they you know anytime i come home with a new one which isn't you know that often because you know tattoos are expensive to get and they take time but um you know they love looking at anything new that i come home with um my daughter, you know, she's constantly saying, like, Daddy, Daddy, you know, show me my name on your arm. I'm like, yeah, here you go, fine, that's, you know, whatever. Um, I guess the other aspect of that is, you know, going into um, more social settings with other parents. Like, I, it, I'm not uncomfortable with that at all. Some people may not, you know, be into tattoos and they may think, like, oh, look, this, you know, guy walking around with his kids and, like, well, several tattoos, you know, where's his priorities? But, um, you know, I, I just see it as it's an expression of myself and I don't think that gets in the way of my parenting abilities. I don't think it gets in the way with time with my children. So, Since we're in the Midwest, there's like a lot of people that come that give a bad stigma on African-American tattoo artists. And so once you're an individual like me, you're going around saying, hey, can I work at your tattoo shop? They think I'm just some street bum that's really trying to do something that's not going to be really committed to it. So I went to every shop that I know, none of, them, none of them wanted to accept me. And I was like, fuck it, dude, I'm just gonna start tattooing. Ordered a tattoo kit off Amazon and did my first tattoo. And I was like, ugh, I gotta get better. And that's just how the journey started. Being in the industry, like I go to a lot of tattoo conventions and um, for when tattooers look at other tattooers, they expect like a certain like artistry to come from that person. So when they come and they observe my artwork and they really see that like I'm a person that's really dedicated to my art and my art style and it's just getting better and better, it just feels really good because they didn't they wouldn't expect that from like my personality and how like crazy I am, you know? And so it just it just feels good to have them realize that there is an African American that's out here doing like good tattoos that people can rock and be like, dude, I got this from Davy Arts, man. Like this shit is nice as fuck. And like, who the hell is that? Oh, he's black? Oh, that's tight. Would not expect that. Cause there's probably like one famous tattoo artist and his name is like Poach. He's like super, super talented. He does like a lot of um, photorealistic tattoos. And there's another one. He's just really old school though. So he just been in the game for a really long time. And some tattoo artists that are on Ink Master, but they're not really, not for say, not to, say anything like Ink Master, but they're not really on that scale of artistry as like those artists or anything like that. And I'm trying to make my way up there, trying to come up on the steps and make a, make a what do you call that? A vision for us black people in the tattoo industry. Uh, my family now, but they don't want to say anything. It's just like, it's, it was something that's like, if it's happened, you can't change it, you gotta like live with it. And you know, when I went back to Nigeria, my mom's, friend was like no more you can't get anymore you have to go to go to church do this you gotta get into heaven no more tattoos okay we know we can't get rid of the tattoos you have right now but no more no more no more after this and that was uh 2016 i believe so like two years ago two three years ago <laughs> Obviously, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't take his advice very well.
Tattoos have long existed in some capacity. The earliest known examples were for a long time Egyptian and were present on several female mummies dated to 2000 BC. But, following the more recent discovery of Etsy the Iceman from the area of the Italian-Austrian border in 1991, this date has been pushed back a further thousand years when he was carbon dated at around 5,200 years old. In addition to Iceman's notable tattoos, there is evidence from over 49 different locations around the world where tattooed mummies and remains have been discovered. This includes locations like Alaska, Mongolia, Egypt, China, Sudan, Russia, the Philippines, and Greenland. As an aspect of culture, tattooing holds special relevance. In Samoan culture, tattooing has been practiced for over 2,000 years. Traditionally done using handmade tools, the skill is passed down from father to son, marking the ascension to a leadership role. These tattoos can take weeks to complete and incur a great deal of pain. Though, I suppose that last aspect hasn't necessarily changed much at all. Does it seem to be worse when we get closer to the crack at the back of your knee? Completely, yes. The tattooing process is deceptively simple. The end result is ultimately to set pigment or ink under the skin in such a way that it heals, becoming permanent. That process, however, has a variety of methods it can take. Piercing, puncturing, or cutting. Piercing, such as the traditional tabori or stick and poke method, requires only a needle, pigment, a shallow angle, and little force. Puncturing, such as methods done by Burmese monks, is much the same, but requires much more force, such as with a wooden mallet. The Polynesian method, as observed by Captain James Cook, requires helpers to stretch the area of skin being tattooed. Cutting, such as the New Zealand Maori Tamoko method, involves scratching or scraping the skin to then rub ink into the cut, also a method preferred by native tribes in Virginia, which were used as tribal or regional identification. Modern tattoo guns are actually a combination of the piercing and puncturing methods due to the use of multiple needles driven in and out of the skin at various speeds. While the methods of tattooing have remained relatively consistent over the years, the styles themselves differ drastically. In the West, the Sailor Jerry style was particularly popular during the 19th and 20th centuries, created by Norman Collins, a former Navy man who was heavily inked for his time. Heavily inked. Drawing from the great Japanese tattoo masters, Collins' style was known for its striking colors and bold lines, depicting ships, women, and other iconography synonymous with early 20th century wartime. Collins is also responsible for pioneering numerous practices of modern tattooing, such as the configuration, sterilization, and purple ink. On the opposite end of the world, Japanese tattooing, Irezumi, originating during the Jomon period from 10,000 BCE to 300 BCE, served numerous functions, tribe identification, protection symbols, and cosmetic symbols of religion and sexual maturity, to name a few. The Ainu, a tribe indigenous to the Hokkaido region, kept their tattoos relegated to the face, while samurai would mark certain areas in order to be identified after death. In the Edo period from 1600 to 1867, tattooing rose in popularity and accessibility while also facing more public scrutiny as it became associated with the Yakuza and criminality. These days, while tattooing is not outlawed, it has been relegated to a procedure requiring a medical license to practice openly. Tabori, a traditional method dating back to the 17th century, is still practiced today, but in secret. While tattooing is still highly stigmatized throughout the majority of the world, there has been a recent shift towards, let's say a tolerance of tattoos. From celebrities to college students, veterans to those currently serving, domestically and internationally, the number of people with tattoos, tattoo shops, and practicing tattoo artists has been on an optimistic and steady incline. And that is a brief and succinct history of tattoos.
I love making people feel more themselves. That idea that you can, uh, you know, express yourself to a point where, you know, if you really feel that way and you want to make yourself look like that way, you, you can. And you have the ability to, to the point where if I see you and you have something tattooed on you that I recognize, I immediately know that that is a connection. If I see you tattooed and I'm tattooed, that's immediately a connection, you know. So to, to have people, especially like nowadays in a world where we're so like, sometimes worried to be ourselves or even uh, the culture makes it not okay to express yourself, it's great to be able to. And especially with tattooing, like, like I've uh, tattooed people's faces or hands or, I mean, even uh, memorial pieces, things like that, that you know, someone will break down and start crying and just be like, thank you. Thank you for this changing my life. I will never be this person that I was or be afraid to be myself. You know, I love that. It's beautiful. You know, just life changing. Honestly, like seeing it on me, I know it's kind of silly because it's like, well, it's tattooed. But like having that on me and like being able to show it is just like a cool way to like even like meeting new people. You know, they're like, oh, hey, that's a really cool tattoo. And I can be like, yeah, that's my mom's handwriting. And I can just kind of be like, you know, I'm really into family. So it's like that shows that I'm really into family. And then the music one, I can talk about my passion for music. So it's almost like I can share that with other people who I might not even know yet. So it's like just kind of a way for me to show who I am on the outside. When I tattoo on people and it's something that they're getting that's really emotional and just to do a tattoo and somebody looks at it and they're like, oh no, and then they tear up because it like looks so beautiful. It's like one of the most satisfying factors about being a tattoo artist. I'm intimidated. People go out of their way to avoid me. Mm -hmm. And as someone who doesn't like people, it's the greatest thing in the world. So my favorite part, honestly, is being able to set myself apart from everybody else. I have defined who I am. I'm defining myself through tattoos, through what I wear, etc. And on top of that is just like, if I walk into any room, I am automatically the most intimidating person in that room, and I love it. My Scorpio selves love it. I think my favorite thing about having tattoos is really just that kind of self-expression. Um, I'd, you know, I'd be I'd be lying if I said like I don't enjoy people you know coming and complimenting or something like that because you know we're all human. We're gonna we're gonna take those compliments and you know it's gonna make us smile. But I I I don't need to. I don't feel like I need to uh, justify myself to anybody else for what I put on my body. It's you know my decision. It has meaning to me, and that's all that matters. And that's really yeah that. That's I have I have given that uh, answer to some people like like why I was like it's because I want to because I like it and that's really like that's all the answer anybody ever needs. Yeah, because most people they do like fine art and you guys know a lot about fine art. You know, it's like really really simple, but it's like ten grand for it. You know, and then people don't pay that much for tattoos. You know, unless they go to like a really really well known tattoo artist like Steve Butcher or like any other like really well-known like pooch or something like that, you know? But when you go to a regular tattoo artist, they want to get something for like 20, 30 bucks, and you're like, bro, this is gonna be on your skin for the rest of your life. There's like, you need to be a little bit more careful and cautious about what you're putting on your body, because regret will happen, you know? What I would say is like, do research and like find information that you would need for what you want, you know? Don't just like be like, oh, I want this tattoo and this tattoo is what I really, really wanted for my whole life and just go down the street and get it because you can't do that. And some artists will lie to you and be like, hey, I will do that tattoo for you just to get some money out of you. And instead of actually looking at it and being like, yeah, I will make this look beautiful on you. So be careful and worry about, be weary about that stuff, you know, because some people are out to get you, you can't trust everybody. Have your own back. My next one is a collection of uh, my favorite anime characters. Um, I don't know where I'm gonna put it yet, but I know I want Saitama from One Punch Man. I want Gon from uh, Hunter Hunter, and I want Captain Levi from mm. Attack on Titans. And uh, I'm still trying to figure out a bunch more, but I gotta watch more anime. <laughs> um, but I know I want those three for sure. Uh, I might just do them in like random places, one year, one there, one whatever, mm. and, but that's currently my plan. Doing that myself though, I'm gonna oh. incorporate a bit of shading. 
I would say to get something that means a lot to you because I know for me the satisfaction of looking down and being reminded of my mom while I'm here at college and it's like oh I have a part of me with her like on my forearm and so I think it's really cool to like sit down and really think about what you find meaningful in life and then just coming up with an art form or even just a sketch of something to like portray that on your body I just think it's really cool it's tough <laughs> Man. Yo, it's 2020. Get good tattoos. Straight up. There's no reason. There's fucking 10 tattoo shops in this block. Like, get a good tattoo. It's that easy. 